book review. This is the book, Heal Your Wounds, Find Your True Self. It's uh, 4.54 p.m., June 1st, 2018. All right, so <laughs> I love how it says, finally, a book that explains why it's so hard being yourself. Um, you know, I was watching, or I just looked, went on the uh, Studying Kala forum, and I saw uh, my uh, teacher, Ernst, had recommended this book to everyone. Um, and I just, I, I really like this book, too, because he'd suggested this to me. Uh, back in October of 2017 when I was going through some tough times and really really helped me and I've been meaning to do a book review of it since then but you know I just forgot and lost track of time um, so I thought what better time than now while well, it's fresh in my mind so this is a great book uh, five major wounds that she talks about the wound of rejection abandonment humiliation betrayal and injustice and then she talks about these masks that we use or these ways that we compensate for those wounds or try to cover them up rather than just let them heal, which is harder to do, but more important to do. Um, so, so this book is really pertinent to any kind of counselor, but it's especially useful for astrologers because it's dealing with five major wounds and we have the five elements, like five is such a huge number for the occult and for astrology. And so, yeah, each of these wounds relates to the five elemental planets, which would be Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. So, you know, she, uh, she actually talks about the wound and then like the mask. So like for rejection, there's the mask of withdrawal. So if you've been rejected a lot in life, then people will just withdraw so that they don't have to feel that wound or pain of rejection. You know what I mean? But you never really heal in that regard, you know? So it's kind of like that Rahu Ketu issue that we don't want to address or don't want to go into, but we have to go into in order to heal. So we find this a lot. So you'll notice that the major wound that one's suffering is usually really connected to Rahu and Ketu in their chart. I know that's the case with me. I know it's the case with a lot of the people I've looked at. Um, she also goes into neat things about the parents, the father and the mother, you know, like this type of wound tends to come from the parent of the same sex or the other opposite, things like that. Um, I actually didn't find that to be correct with my experience, but it's very cool that she does that because in general, as astrologers and counselors know how important your parents are and how much they kind of like impress issues upon you, but they're really the ones you're meant to have impressed or you wouldn't have chosen those parents. And further, we know that Rahu and Ketu actually are the karakas of ancestral karmas. They are the, the important planets to look at for the ancestral chart, the D12, the Dwadashamsha chart. So Rahu and Ketu, we already know, have a lot to do with your ancestral karmas. And so, again, they, it makes sense why your parents kind of had to do with instilling these issues upon you. So you got rejection, withdrawal, abandonment. They, when you feel abandoned all the time, you, you compensate by dependency, um, which makes it even more likely to be abandoned. You know what I mean? Which is, which is bad. And then humiliation, masochism. You know, when you've been humiliated a lot, like that wound I relate to, I related to Saturn. And um, masochism being the compensation, like if you have been hurt and humiliated, you just go ahead and, you know, harm yourself or, you know, you don't care about your body. You feel masochistic to kind of convey like, well, what does it matter? But really, that's again like a mask or a compensation. So people who are masochistic to themselves, they may have been humiliated really in some way when they were younger that uh, if you work with them in sessions, you'll uncover that. Um, then you have betrayal, the wound of betrayal. That I've related to the fire element and Mars. And uh, this is really, really one I have a lot of experience with. A lot of friends of mine have this wound so obviously and the the mask you wear is control, where you're always trying to control what's happening. Um, and and I have that to some degree too in my sense. We all, I mean, we all are gonna have some of this, I think we could relate to at some point in our lives, but, um, and there are just a lot of wounds that we have in life, unless you're a really lucky person, you'll just keep uncovering more and more. Um, and this book kind of conveys about how important it is to be able to accept 
these wounds and that's how you heal and it really is the truth I mean there are issues that you can overcome and work out don't get me wrong like some elbow grease in life like yeah do it do it all you can um, you got you got dietary problems make sure you're getting a good diet a good vegetarian diet or you're overweight you need to exercise you know but then there is other things that are just deeper deeper embedded issues that you're usually just deceiving yourself when you try to act above it you know or when you try to be like uh, it just depends if you're able to really are it's it's up to you but a lot of times uh, we can deceive ourselves um, very easily the ego is the slipperiest thing a lot of times it happens on spiritual paths too you get into this real uh, spiritual path you know and you're all Shiva hum like I am Shiva nothing is you know I am the infinite consciousness and so what is it? nothing none of this matters or anything but you don't really know that person's inner states and unless they really are at that state all the time then they might be lying to themselves you know what I mean and so unless you're really a fiery powerful Shiva yogi then you need to incorporate some of this more lunar accepting this yin side of just accepting where you're at making peace with it and just healing and then you can move on or in another way of putting it you could say like Mars are, can be used to to power through situations and yeah you need you're overweight you need to exercise like that example but then there are other issues there's the inevitable you know there are things that just happen death you know your, your, your mother dies your you know your closest person in your life passes away there's no amount of willpower or training or mantras that's gonna change that and so you need to learn to accept that fate you know or that situation and make peace with it and be resigned to the will of God and that's Saturn um, and it has a lot to do with surrender and Pisces as well. Um, so like Rahu and Pisces people will oftentimes initially want to like fix everything and be like that and just power through it and just more intelligent, more Mercury, more Virgo. They'll just know I can just solve everything. And maybe they can, but maybe one day they have a breakdown and they can. They have to surrender. You know what I mean? And that's when the true healing begins. Um, and hey, maybe it's okay if I can't solve every problem. Maybe I can be okay with the problems as they are. Maybe those problems are here for a reason. And then they start, the gears of their life start turning in a different way. And then cut out some of these other karmas and start being a different person. Um, and then, you know, injustice is, they mask it by rigidity. So when they felt uh, people who've been oppressed or felt like a major injustice has been done to them, they'll compensate by being very strict and very strong and rigid and just not screw up in any way. But it doesn't, that oftentimes doesn't help the wound either, you know? Um, so this, this book goes into all this very well. She's not an astrologer, but she happens to hit a lot of the same uh, corollary points. And I really like it. Yeah, so I was really grateful um, to have this book suggested and passing it along. Um, one really great example she gives in this book is how... Like you can have a wound, you can have your a scab on your hand, and it's literally a wound. And then when you go to shake hands with someone, which is a normal thing you do, and they shake your hand, it's like, oh, that hurts. Why'd you hurt me? That person didn't really hurt you, you know? It was your fault because it was your wound that you didn't heal, that you opened up and gave to the person to hurt, essentially. And so we can't blame other people when we go through the world, and that's the experience that we get, you know? So it's up to us to heal that wound first and then move forward. And she makes a lot of points about how we, like how easy it is for us to deceive ourselves and think we've healed something, you know? And to think we've overcome our issues and just be like, oh, that's fine, it's never gonna happen again. And then they come back even harder sometimes. Um, a great guru once said how, especially when you get into spirituality and stuff, there's a lot of times we this the ego goes underground and it's like fighting this guerrilla warfare where, oh, I, I wear robes, or I have beads, or I have all these things, I'm vegetarian, there's no way that I'm hurt anymore. And depends on the situation, but have you really addressed that healing or not? That's the major thing. And when I was in October, and with Ernst and other people at his place uh, last November, um, you know, he talked a lot about that, about how a lot of people are just wanting to skip the psychological stage of the spiritual journey and go straight to liberation. And you can't just go straight to that or you can't go straight to surrendering until your ego has healed and co or gotten to a place where it understands and is healed and has a healthy ego to surrender. 
God doesn't want our messed up, <laughs> or you know what I mean? Like you have, most people can't even surrender because they're so caught up in everything, you know, um, in their karma. And so, so it's just, there's a lot, like Yogananda said it too. And, and that's what Ernst was referring to. He was saying, you know, Yogananda said that most people are skipping the, the psychological battle and are trying to go straight to the, uh, the spiritual battle of, battle of surrendering without go without you know working through the issues of their psyche and all so once we do that the spiritual battle is actually a lot um, easier in many ways or it's it's not as as hard um, once we've kind of fully committed to that um, but becoming ha happy with ourselves like this book says just being ourselves is the really hard part and that's kind of has a lot to do with Aquarius in many ways Aquarius has a lot to do with accepting ourselves and it's that last stage before then we move into Pisces, which is the, the real uh, sign of, of spirituality, meditation, moksha, whatever. So, um, hope you guys appreciate this book and enjoy it. I give it five out of five stars. Very good book. Thanks.